Okay, guys, uh, viewers' choice. Uh, we got some good suggestions, I think. So, are we ready to pick a pick a topic? Yeah, we put them all in a hat. I think we're ready to pick. Yeah. Okay, cool. Oh yeah, let's do it. God, I hate this. So as you know, this week is our viewer's choice episode, which is something we've never done before. But at the same time, there's been a lot of book two stuff that's been going on on the internet. So Vincent, Vincent, uh, what, what are some of these things that have been happening okay, on the internet? Well, there was a screen cap that came out. It has uh, episode, the episode one title for book two. It's called Rebel Spirit. Rebel Spirit. What do you get? What do you guys think about that? Let's let's discuss that. Ryan, Rebel Spirit. Rebel Spirit. Maybe they're just referring to Korra. Because she is a rebel spirit. We know that Avatar has had a history of having double meanings in their in their opening in their t show titles. Double so I mean, I think that leads to perhaps the clip we saw that they released a while ago of uh, season two of her fighting a spirit. The way they drew that rebel spirit or whatever it was, the purple dude, it looked was awesome. He looked looked like he was drawn by a completely different animation studio. Like, and in order to get that effect to you know translate to the viewers so well, they made it look literally like it doesn't belong there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Korra was pretty feisty and rebellious in the first season. Is this going to be a trend still? Is she going to rebelliously strike off to the Southern Water Tribe? I would think that Korra has kind of matured from where we've seen her in book one. Not not only in the fact that, you know, she's now a fully realized Avatar, but now if she's going back to the Southern Water Tribe, I mean, that's where she's grown up. She's not a fish out of water main character, you know, like she was in Republic right. City. Well, yeah, I, I think... Uh... I think we're probably going to find out a lot more about those creatures and about probably yeah. the first episode. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if they put it up early like they did for season one. We are we're rapidly approaching uh, Comic Con, and we've seen this build up. Uh, they released some kind of some kind of ebook. Yeah, did open, did anybody yeah, it, it's like it's this free interactive book that's on iTunes. You can download it if you like. Right. And they also put it up on YouTube. And yeah. I mean, it kind of just has a couple of uh, like little glimpses at some of the characters that are going to be in uh, in mm -hmm. book two. All right. Well. Uh, like I said, I think we're I think we're gonna have a whole wealth of information about those characters, especially at the Comic Con panel. Um, a lot of you guys asked that we talk about the stuff leading up to season two for the viewer response prompt. Um, we're definitely gonna do a uh, a predictions episode closer to the start of season two when we find out when that is. Hopefully, we find out at Comic Con. The fandom is is uh, is emerging. They're it's awakening. awaking from their slumber, and it's really it, I feel the I feel a the buzz. I feel the buzz, the excitement. So uh, that being said. Let's get into this uh, viewer's choice episode. Let's let's, let's do that. Let's, uh, let's do that thing you just said. As the right viewers now. have chosen, we will discuss. We've decided that today's viewer's choice topic of conversation will be great mustaches of the Avatar universe. Yes. I'd like to start off first. Okay, okay. the greatest mustache that I think ever existed in the Avatar universe was Monk Gyatso's. And my favorite part about that mustache was that even when Aang found his his skeleton and found out that his race had succumbed to genocide the mustache remained it, it was resilient it's it great. had remained yes. through the years through a mm -hmm. hundred years yeah. that true. is a hundred year mustache it's fantastic my favorite one has always been wang fire it encompasses everything that you see i mean when you see that on screen it is what does that mean <laughs> <laughs> when you see well, when if wang fire appears he is that mustache right. you know it draws the eye yeah, it, it's. Does he have a face or legs? I don't. I, I don't know. No, I've never. When he is as when when fire. I have never actually considered mustache. whether or not he was anything more. than I a assumed mustache. the mustache was named Wang Fire. Right, and that it was using a host body to transport it. Yes. Okay. Um. So I don't know. Uh, is there a better mustache in the Avatar universe? I, I'm gonna throw this one out there. Nyla, a mm -hmm. sheer shoe. It's, okay. A mustache. Th because it's also functional. Exactly. I was gonna say that he has that all the other mustaches. Are, for uh, sure. are aesthetic, right? But that has... well, there's nothing wrong with aesthetics. No, but I think when you also have the functionality, yes. Uh, well, okay. Style and function. Yeah, okay, but it has none of the aesthetics. I tend to I, I, I think that also it I is think... a prehensile mustache. What the hell are we talking about? <laughs> what does that even mean? Wait, were we supposed <laughs> to have a mustache discussion? That's a no. No, 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 keep going. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna wrap. <laughs> My mustache, I think, is overlooked, and that is Toph's mustache. It lacks a physical presence, but it's there, and none of you could deny that. Well, I haven't seen it, but she can't ah, deny that she, she doesn't have one because she exactly. can't see it herself. Oh. The Phantom Menace. It's better than the Phantom Menace. So we talked about it long and hard, and we decided finally that the uh, viewer's choice conversation we're going to have is shipping. 
relationships in the Avatar universe. I think well, we should start logically at the beginning. So where do we stand? Where do we stand, ladies and gents? Uh, yeah. Vince, what do you think? I am for Katara and Aang. Okay. I thought that it always made sense. I mean, right from the beginning, you, you could kind of tell that that's where it was going to go. Right. There was always some little hints that Zutara was a possibility, but it was so overblown by the fans because it was what some people like just wanted to see more than anything, so they decided that... It, right, okay, yes, you make a good point. But just because the fans wanted it doesn't mean that it isn't something that's valid within the show's own context. So, so Ryan, I'm going to assume that you are a... Indeed. Indeed you, are a, Indeed. Z, a, Z, <laughs> you are a... You are a... A Zutaran? A Zutaran. Yes. Zutari. Zutarian. Zutarian. You were a Zutarian. Okay. Um, so, so you were well, a fan okay. of uh, you were a fan of uh, Zuko and, and Katara. Right. And look, look this this is uh, up to you know around the end of season two, really, is where you know after this, not so much. But I say up to that point, I there was still a strong case for it because I never felt the tension and the struggle between Aang and Katara. Like, why, like, why did I have to root for their relationship to succeed? Wait, you never felt the tension? Did you watch The Fortune Teller? I mean, like, that is all about, like, teen Aang. Because I wanted to Aang to get with uh, Aang. I, I, I agree with you. I, I think it was pretty, uh, I think it was pretty apparent that um, Aang and uh, Katara were gonna be together, even from the very beginning. The ending of season two was our first indication that Zuko and Katara could even have been a thing. And because there was that huge gap, of time between the two seasons, I think that allowed the fandom to go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. like they planted the seed in their head, and and I think the creators maybe, and this is my theory, but I think the creators maybe ran with that and played with that a little bit more in season three because they knew that it would make for a more interesting story. But I never really thought that, I never really thought that Zuko and Katara was ever really a, a serious possibility. I think I, it always but felt a little. But the fact that they even ran with it a little bit means that there was a possibility there. If they thought yeah. it was interesting, they wouldn't have included it. It was interesting, though. I will give you that. And, and like uh, on the opposite side, I never really felt that any kind of relationship status between Aang and Jatara was all that interesting. Uh, I mean, I, well, one, other you than guys my protagonist, we're right. saying that it whether you saw it happening or not. And I don't know if that argument <laughs> does it. Like, well, one, I never saw. Not that I never, but I didn't see Zuko and Katara that happening. But that doesn't mean that it wasn't a more interesting idea. I do, however, think that I that. Aang and Katara was the right without saying absolute without seeming absolute I did think it was the right choice for that story for this story they're trying to tell it's like to bring up something stupid well is the Twilight thing right the whole point of the story is for her to for their relationship right. for the people to side with Jacob is completely ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. So I think this is similar. Obviously, it's not the exact same scope. But, but, but at the same time, you could argue that, that and I don't want to get too far down the rabbit hole of Twilight, but that Jacob was the better choice. Just like you could argue that maybe, but um, I'm saying they that didn't, Zuko was the better but choice. But they didn't for... build that in the story. The whole point, One, the other thing, too, is this story is the first story. Obviously, they're building a universe here. And we could see, leading into uh, Korra, that it gets more complicated. But these are kids. They're not. It's not necessarily about relationships and back and forth no. and who loves who. No. They're just. They're just yeah. like preteens. I always, not, yeah. It's not. It's if they're doing that, they're not really hitting the the, the notes they're supposed to be hitting with this show. I mean, I I, right. I do kind of think that it was a weird note to end the the series finale with with Aang and Katara kissing at all. Like yeah, I, I, I always thought that that having like these relationships when they're like ten and twelve and thirteen, like was always a little bit bizarre to me. If this was like a feudal society or something, which a is feudal a feudal society? A feudal. <laughs> well, baby, imagine if they're the one. <laughs> if it was a feudal society, a it would feudal make more society. Sense. <laughs> okay, Zuko and Katara. If we were to break things down and have no context, like uh, they might have been a more interesting relationship. It might right. have been more right. interesting, maybe, but the they, they didn't build it in the show. And for them, I think that if they did end up together, it wouldn't have been found. It would have been. It wouldn't have been justified. They didn't build it well enough in the show, and it would have felt like just like, oh, we just did that because it's. Theoretically, it's more interesting. But, but it, okay, it how about this? How about this analogy? In anything it's in like the rest of the show. James Marsden versus Ryan Gosling. I think Ryan Gosling is the way better choice, but James Marsden is the yeah. safe choice. I felt like Aang is the safe choice. Her relationship with him was essentially a forgiveness of the Fire Nation. Right. What they did to her and her family. And accepting yeah. so, Zuko as an yeah. individual. But that was never from, something right. that was meant to be romantic. See, yeah. from the second yeah. that no, I, Aang yeah. sees Katara, there's like a romantic vibe going on. Right. And just right. it's placed throughout like almost every from the single first episode. episode from the very first right. episode like, it's it's a build up with a payoff if i'm at a party and i'm wingman in it and and i'm and i'm best friends with katara i'm i'm going to go introduce her to zuko not ang 
But okay, no, well, I don't know. Actually, I disagree with that because Aang's the nice boy. Zuko's the trouble. He's oh, he's trouble. But also, okay, I knew he was trouble when he walked in. That's true. Trouble. I knew. Trouble. 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 All right, well, that's a wrap. We're done, right? Yeah. We can take everything we can take down? Everything we're done We're done filming? Okay, I'll get the lights. You want to get the camera? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Guys, uh, the search part two just leaked online. So, gonna have to talk about it. God, I 